if you're someone who enjoys building and creating things as much as I do, and I mean literally anything, you're probably well familiar with this feeling. You wake up one day feeling inspired for one reason or another and envision some grandiose project in your head. Something that would be so cool to do and complete that it gets you hyped up just thinking about it. But unfortunately, as reality sets in, you quickly decide that such a project would be far too unrealistic or ambitious to actually be done yourself. Perhaps you think you simply wouldn't have enough time and it would take too long. Perhaps you think you don't have the talent or the skills to do so. Perhaps the scope of the project just seems so big and alien to you that you wouldn't even know where to start. About two years ago I had this kind of thought while working on another unrelated project. At the time I was only just getting into analog synthesis after picking up the piano again during COVID and I was trying to think of new ways to incorporate this hobby into my already established love of DIY. The thought of building a modular synthesizer had crossed my mind at this point. I had come across people online who had done it and my dad had brought it up in the past as an idea. The idea had never really amounted to anything. It would be fantastic, sure, but I didn't know anything about that. The closest thing I'd ever done to a DIY electronics project was fiddling around on my Arduino. The only real soldering experience I had was like a single class I did on it during uni. Nevertheless, I was determined to do something. Just not that. Leave that kind of project to the professionals. No, I needed to keep it real. I needed to do a project that was a little more realistic. Then again, I could just say fuck it and give it a try. This bad boy right here is the Radvan Analog Modular Synthesizer, or RAM for short. With 44 modules over two cases and a keyboard, including six oscillators, four filters, a sequencer, effects, LFO, six envelope generators, an oscilloscope, noise generator, and a full array of drums, the RAM here was built to house its own little band's worth of electronic instruments. Short of any kind of dedicated polysynth, of course. I can't really express how happy I am with how this thing turned out. I mean. I started working on this thing back in mid-2021 and back then it never really occurred to me that I would get this far, yet here we are! If I want to get my hands on a brand new modular synthesizer of this size and caliber, and I mean full size, not Eurorack, I wouldn't be surprised if it set me back tens of thousands of dollars. This on the other hand, over the course of like two and a half years, mind you, probably sent me back about two and a half grand Australian, so that's like what, a hundred bucks US? In terms of time spent building it, on the other hand, well, I can only really guess, but considering how long it takes me to build a single module on average, plus all the random troubleshooting and whatnot, I might guess somewhere in the ballpark of 500 hours as an estimate. Wouldn't be surprised if I'm off by like 100 hours in some direction though, so take that with a big grain of salt. I would probably say that a big inspiration for me with this project, especially at the beginning, was Sam's modular synth Cosmo at Look Mum No Computer. He's got a bunch of little modular synth projects on his site that I definitely made good use of, highly recommended. But really, most of the modular designs I built here are from all over the place. I'm afraid to say that only a handful of the modules here are actually 100% Hue designed originals. Some of the really fantastic DIY sources and inspirations I used and would highly suggest checking out include a bloke named Eddie Bergman and a fellow by the moniker Soundbender. Both run their own sites slash blogs where they showcase their own modular synth builds as well as other things. They both have a whole lot of great build guides and such that I'd highly recommend checking out if you're interested. I'll link them all below. Then of course, sites like Music From Outer Space, Usynth, and a handful of others have some great resources if you want to try something like this. I gotta shout them out because without these people sharing their own build resources, I'm not sure where I would have started. Uh, the project certainly would have taken a lot longer if it even happened at all. Anyway, I'm gonna lug this monolith back inside and go ahead and give you a full tour of its features.
All right, well, here we are. Before we start on the case, though, let me just give you a quick rundown on how I operate the RAM. Down here, you can see the main way I do so is through a combination of the Arturia BeatStep Pro and the KeyStep Pro. Generally, I just take the pitch and the gate signals from these two controllers and plug them directly into whatever system I need on the RAM. Although I do use the MIDI output on the BeatStep to control the drums. I've been using these two controllers for a while and I must say I'm a big fan of them. They both give me good live sequencer control and basically offer me everything I need to control RAM. As well as my other synthesizers. Anyway, those two are sitting on a larger MIDI keyboard I stripped and shoved into a wooden box. Acts as a nice base for the RAM and also lets me play with a full-size keyboard, which is always useful. Now, moving up from there brings us to box one, my starting point for this project. Starting on the left bottom, we've got the most exciting module of all, the power supply. Hooked up through this missile switch just for that slight added bit of flair. Above that is a dual buffered multiplier I run pitch control through and the first four oscillators. These use the AS3340 chip and have just about everything you'd need from an oscillator, including an octave range switch that doesn't quite switch in octave increments. Never did get around to fixing that. Next is a four-way mixer followed by a dual MS20 style filter, both with high and low pass options. These filters can be set to be linked, making a continuous filter chain, or they can be set to act as two independent filters. After that is a simple VCA followed by a neat little oscilloscope. Not the most useful in terms of troubleshooting electrical problems, but it does look cool. Isn't that just the most important thing of all? Finally, at the end here, we've got a sample and hold as well as a noise module. Jumping back to the start now is a simple eight step sequencer. Fairly basic, but it's still fun to use. Next are two ADSR envelope generators, two unbuffered multipliers, and the RAM's one and only dedicated LFO. Although you can use the oscillators as one as well. This one has three waveforms and two voltage offset waveforms, including a shape modifier that lets you make things like saw waves, for instance. After that is a two-way mixer, followed by yet another filter, this time a Moog-style ladder filter. Following that is another VCA, a triple envelope generator, this time in a simple attack decay attack release configuration, and a four-way attenuator, which I use as the final output for all oscillator chains before sending them to my mixer. With the first box complete, we can now hop up to the second and more recently constructed box of the RAM. Starting with, of course, another power supply. Wowie. Then going up one module to the top row, we find a MIDI to gate splitter. This one uses an Arduino to convert MIDI signals from the BeatStep Pro into 5 volt pulses for the drums. Makes it a lot easier than running individual cables from each drum straight to the controller. Here we've got a dual slew module for some portamento and yet another buffered multiplier. Then, similar to box one, we've got two final oscillator modules this time based on the TH555 chip. These ones have all the same features as the last bunch, with the addition of a dedicated sine wave output. To complement those, we have another two-way mixer and the RAM's final filter. This one being a lovely Steiner Parker filter with low pass, band pass, high pass, and all pass settings. For this module I had some extra space and decided to also include a modified guitar tuner hooked up to the filter's line input. This not only makes tuning the oscillator easier, but once again, just kinda looks cool when you're playing. Gotta keep your priorities straight, you know? Then after that, yet another ADSR and VCA, identical to the ones from earlier followed by the RAM's small but important effects section. Here we'll find a dual valve distortion module, a dual delay module using the PT2399, Phaser. Yeah. 
and a ring modulator. And now finally that brings us to the final section of the RAM, the drum kit. Starting off we have an 808 style kick drum, snare drum, a dual hi-hat module, so I can use one for open and close hi-hat sounds, a bell module, a twin T drum module that has a handful of simple drum sounds, a sweep module, This is basically just an MS filter and an envelope generator in one. It doesn't make any sound by itself, but by hooking up to my noise generator it can make a pretty good crash module. After that is my dual tom module, which makes these iconic disco tom sounds that frankly I can't get enough of. Honestly, I ought to make a drum machine with just like 10 of these, these are great. Then I've got a sidechain module to add a little bit more punch to the bass and kick. And to merge it all together and finish the synth, I've got this big 10 channel mixer that I use to mix the drums. Each channel has a volume and pan option, and unlike the Oslayer channels, the whole mix is output in stereo. And that about does it as far as a feature breakdown is concerned. If anyone's interested, the final module I built for this project was the sidechain module, and the first thing I ever built was this single MS-20 style filter. If you're wondering where that one is on the RAM, it was actually the only module that didn't make the final cut, being replaced in favour of this dual filter variant. Its shell did get reconstituted into this Moog filter though, so I guess you could say it's still here in spirit. Anyway, as you might have guessed, I didn't really document the whole build process over two years. However, I did document the build progress for the very last module I did, just to show the kind of routine I went through when building each of these, hopefully giving you guys an idea on how to build one of these if anyone's interested in giving it a go. We'll have a quick look at that in a sec.
Okay, so here we go. Right, so the first thing I do before starting anything is getting a design together. For this module, we're going to be going with a side chain design that's conveniently already been strip boarded by Soundbender here, saving me some time. In this case, I first decide to make a couple modifications to the design to fit my needs, but once it's all done, it's off to the races. After I've got my schematic, I make a quick cutout sketch of the panel design I like to use as a guide later. This step isn't exactly necessary, but I like to do it to ensure jack and pot placement positioning is somewhat consistent with the other modules on the synth. That then takes us outside where I start cutting an aluminium sheet down for size for the front panel. For my synth, I use 1.6mm aluminium with a height of around 200mm. The material and thickness choice here isn't terribly important, this is just what I had on hand, but you could use anything from plastic to perspex to wood, glass. Actually, yeah, there's an idea. So I'll make a glass synth, I'd like to see that. Once it's cut out, I bring back the panel sketch from earlier and mark down the spots I'll need to drill, punching them as well to stop the drill bit from slipping. When I do drill, I start by making a pilot hole before going back through with the actual drill bit sizes I'll need to fit each component. Despite this being like the 40 somethingth time I've done this, I still don't remember the correct drill bit sizes for everything, so I always make sure to compare the drill bit sizes with each component as I go. When that's done, I deburr all the jagged edges left over with the largest drill bit I can find, give it a good sand to clean it up, and set it up to be spray painted. Make sure to wipe all the aluminium dust off first though. Oh, and make sure to drop it on the ground too. Work hard on you know. While that's drying, I start cutting some standoffs out of an aluminium angle bar, allowing me to mount my strip board to the module panel later. I like to mount it at a 90 degree angle to the panel for ease of accessibility in case I need to modify it later. Makes cable management 10 times easier too. Now it's a pretty hot day, so by now the front panel should be dry enough for the next stage of painting, adding the pot level indicators. For these, I 3D printed a little stencil I made and glued it to a thin wooden panel. Then I just place it over the spot I want and give it a few good sprays. This is another one of those steps that isn't exactly necessary, but I think it makes the module look a bit more professional, quote unquote. Back inside again, and I continue by cutting the pots down to size, ensuring the knobs will sit at a reasonable level. Then I start painting all the decaling and lettering onto the panel in accordance to the sketch I made earlier. Single coat is rarely enough for me, so I also do a second one for good measure. With that done, I'm finally ready to fasten all the panel mounted components to the module, followed by these knobs to complete the look. Now I can finally put that aside and start work on the second part of this build, the circuitry itself. First, I start by marking down all the track brakes I'll need and drilling them out. Then I move on to the resistors, diodes, wire bridges, socket mounts, capacitors, and anything else I've forgotten. Only once everything is in place do I drill the board mounting holes I'll need to fix the circuitry to the front panel with the standoffs I made earlier. Looking pretty good, but we're not done yet. Because for this design, I'm also going to be building a DIY Vactrol, consisting of an LED and photoresistor. How exciting. To do this, I first sand the LED down so it sits flush with the photoresistor, slot both into a shrink tube sock, and blast it with a heat gun. If all went well, we'll be left with a decent approximation of a Vactrol. Nice and isolated from any external light pollution. And that finally finishes off the last electrical component to be attached to the strip board, allowing us to move on to wiring the panel mount components into the circuit itself. This can be a fairly tedious step, especially when there's lots of wires, but for this module it's fairly straightforward. Last but not least, I socket the one IC I'll need for this circuit and the whole thing is finally complete. Then, once I've given it a test and fixed any bugs, it's ready to be slotted into the RAM, finishing off the build and in this case the whole damn project. Wowie.
So the question is, now that I've finished all my main goals for this project, what exactly do I do now? Well, in terms of the RAM, despite me being happy calling this a finished project, there are still a few things I'd like to do to improve upon it. These mostly stack up to just sort of upgrading modules I wasn't totally happy with, although there are also a few persistent bugs that I'll probably have to tackle at some point. What I don't have any more plans for, however, is expanding the synth itself, adding more boxes and such. I'm pretty happy with the size as is, and even if I wanted to, I'm kind of short on real estate these days. Things are almost hitting the roof as it is. With the RAM done, I'd really like to get started on some other music-related projects that I've piled up over the course of working on this. Something smaller though, I ain't so keen on jumping into another two-year marathon so soon. Whatever I end up doing though, I can assure you if it ends up being any good, you'll see a full report here. Appendix and all. But beyond that, not losing sight of one of the main reasons I built RAM to begin with, I'd really like to start making some music again. I kind of put that all on halt for the build, especially towards the end there, and I think it's probably about time I clock in some more hours. On top of that, I'd also like to perform live at some point with RAM, at least once. Even if lugging that giant thing around to venues does sound like a bit of a nightmare. Whether or not I'd be any good at it, well, that's a different story. But at the end of the day, I still think it would be a bit of fun. And isn't that what it's all about, right? It's not about the music after all, it's about the friends we made along the way. So there you have it. I hope that was all a little bit interesting or helpful to someone. And to anyone considering undertaking their own modular synthesizer build themselves, uh, well... Get started.
I was just trying to think of ways to incorporate this new hobby into my already established love of DUI. DUI, yeah. I was starting to think of ways to incorporate this new hobby into my already established love of DIY. I almost said DU fucking Y again. I was just starting to think of ways to incorporate this new hobby into my already established love of DUI. Fucking DUI, DIY, you fucking cunt, bitch, son of a... I do love DUI, though. I was trying to think of new ways to incorporate this new hobby into my already established love of DUI. I am fucking gonna kill myself. D-I fucking Y. What the fuck is... <laughs> and I was trying to think of new ways to incorporate this new hobby into my already established love of DUI. Ah! D-I. 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 D fucking I. D... Die, 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 DIY, die, why, die, 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 DIY, DI fucking why. Okay. I'm okay. I'm never writing, I'm, I'm never doing script shit again. I'm never, never doing this fucking. Oof. <clears throat>